the AFN Fishing Show goes on leave and discovers how good holiday fishing can be. We hit the rock walls in search of Lutterick and hook up with sporting celebrities Merv Hughes and Diffa Domenico as they chase public holiday snapper in Melbourne. Travelling to a holiday destination often means you're fishing from shore. Nigel Webster heads to Fort Stevens in New South Wales and targets land-based Lutterick with a travel rod. We've got something really exciting for you today. For me, a combination of using bait and one of the most visibly engaging techniques that I know of. Chasing Ludrick using weeds and float in the estuary. It's shore-based, it's easy, and I reckon if you follow what we're going to show you today, you'll be catching fish before you know it. Let's get into it. Oh yeah! Catching Ludric, the unconventional style. I grew up being taught the very proper way to catch Ludric, which was with the old centre pin reels and the big 10 foot blackfish rods. String weed and floats. I'm down away from home, fishing Port Stephens at the moment, and I've got my travel two-piece seven-foot spin rod. And at the moment, it's having to do as a Ludric rod, but it's doing a good job and I'm having fun. Beautiful fish. I think sometimes the fish that you grow up catching and learning to fish always hold a special place for you. And these guys, definitely like that for me. I was about 12, 13 years old. Family holidays down the south coast of New South Wales. Parents would let me go for days at a time and fish around places like Darris Estuary around Batemans Bay. And when I wasn't chasing flathead and brim and tailor and stuff like that, I resorted to learning how to catch these things. Anyway, I'm gonna get this guy back in the water. Bit of shelter and he'll make his way out to join his mates. Here he goes now. That's the way home. See ya. An easy fish to catch, really, on a shore-based platform. Around winter time, sort of late autumn to winter, they start running into the estuaries from the oceans, and they'll school up anywhere where you've got a bit of ledge and structure and a place where they can sit and congregate and get food coming past them. And if you want to catch them, that's the first part of the equation. Work out where they're going to be holding, and then present a weed bait. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Time to re-rig and get into it. I've selected this place to fish for a, a couple of reasons. First bit, it looks like the kind of spot you're going to find your Ludric. I've got a nice rocky platform. It's a nice, falls in, across a nice ledge into some deeper water. And I've got a, a fair bit of current flow moving out and it's not that far from the entrance to the ocean. It's a prime place that I think I'm going to find a few Ludric early on in the season. Case now of just getting aim my bait down to the right depth and then creating a nice drifting bait through the, the zone or that length of, of the ledge that I think are going to hold the fish. I've found where I think they're going to be now it's a case of just starting to work it see if I can find one or two. Fish this one, a little weight to it. A few rocks to navigate him over, which is the one benefit of the old style longer rod. You just got a bit more leverage to steer fish around obstacles. But certainly still, certainly still do the job with spin rod. Seven foot light spin rod, it's a pretty good tool for doing this. It's nice and light, enjoy the fight of the fish. Got enough length to cast a float around. They're pretty fish, very distinctive stripes. A relative of the, the drummer, the rock blackfish. And they don't fight quite as brutally hard and dirty as the, the drummer on the rocks, but they still put up a good account for themselves. Nice big tail, big powerful shoulder. And very small mouths, which means you've got to cater your tackle towards them. Small hooks, they're vegetarians as well, which is why we're using the, the weed baits. This one will go back as well. I just 
run you through the rig that I'm using today to chase these Ludric off the rocks. To start with, I might talk you through rod and reel now. This is very much not the traditional style of outfit for chasing Ludric. When I grew up, I learned to do it with old centre pin reels and long 10 foot rods that were very specifically designed to chasing Ludric with floats. I'm holidaying at the moment in Port Stephens and this is a great little travel rod. It's a, it's a two piece, seven foot outfit. It's a three to five kilo rod. Fits into a very small tube, which means it's easy on the planes. Good for flathead and brim, but also good for this style of fishing. It's very easily adapted to chasing Ludric on floats. I've matched it with a 2500 size reel, little Abu Garcia. I've got four pound braid and I'm using a six pound leader, which is a really nice light line, which means I can cast a light float very easily. Now I'll get down to the, the business end of proceedings. It looks complex, but it's not. And the, the key part of the rig is obviously your float, and I really like these pencil or stick floats, just because they, they move very easily through the water. So when a fish takes your bait, it doesn't feel a lot of resistance. It's a free running float, and it's stopped by a stopper. Now any good tackle store will retail float stoppers, and they're simply a case of rigging that onto your main line before you put your float on. And the beauty of these is that while you're fishing, you can slide them up and down your line to keep your bait at exactly the designated depth you think the fish are gonna be holding. To support that float, I use split shot. Now the beauty of split shot is when I first start fishing, I can put on one or two bits, two little split shots, crimp them on, and the first few casts, you'll see how your float sits. Now, today I started with two and my float sat on a bit of a diagonal. Whereas what I really wanted was it sitting nice and straight and about that high out of the water. So what I did was crimped on another split shot. Next cast, beautiful. Just that little bit of float lets me see what's going on, but it's really easy for a fish to pull it down underneath the water. And then 10 to 20 centimeters beneath my split shot, I've got a little number eight hook. That is the rig that you need to catch a Ludric. Nice and simple, but very effective. Late autumn and winter is the time that your Ludric start entering your estuary and what they've been doing before that is hanging around the ocean rocks and spending the majority of their time feeding on cabbage. And what you'll find when you are fishing for them in the estuary is that the longer they've been in the estuary, so the later winter gets on, the more they'll start eating sometimes some of your finer weed, your green weed that lives in the estuary. And that can be a bit tricky to find at, at times, but that's always been the challenge of Ludric fishermen. But the beauty about early season fish is that as they come into the estuary, they're still accustomed to eating this sea cabbage or, or the stuff which you find out in your ocean rocks. And it's readily available in most places. And go and find a few chunks of that because early in the season, you'll well and truly catch the fish on this. And there's a bit of a trick to rigging it, which I'll show you now. It can be a little bit tricky rigging this stuff. And one of the things that I like to do when I'm actually collecting your cabbage down on the rocks is that the way you find it growing is rather than just ripping away at it and getting just the leaf, I like to get my fingernails right down onto the rock and try and pry away a little bit of the root system. You'll find it's often on some lichen-y type material which sits on the rocks. And it's actually a little bit tougher than the rest of the leaf. And what that means is it gives you a bit of a base to pin this stuff to a hook pretty well. And that's obviously the first place that I shove a hook through. And you'll, you'll find it's nice and gritty. And having pushed it through, I then like to just pull my hook through that hard bit so that the eye goes actually through it. And what it'll do is it'll hold that in place a lot better. Then it's a case of just pulling away some of the excess, getting rid of that or using it as your burly and then wrapping a few leaves over and pulling them down on top of the hook. And what you'll find fairly quickly, once you've trimmed it up, give it a bit of a haircut, you'll find a bait that stays on the hook pretty well. It's nice and rigid and drifts around very much like a natural bit of vegetation floating around the estuary. And that's what these guys are sitting around looking for. Drift that past them you're well on your way to catching some Ludwig. When it comes to a little bit of technique to catch your Ludric in the estuary, having found your spot, you're typically going to be fishing a little bit of a drift, an area where you think the fish are concentrating and you're going to drift your bait through where they are. So what you want to do is cast five to 10 meters above that zone. I like to, as soon as the float has landed, throw your line down on top of the water so it doesn't end up everywhere and start dragging your float 
badly. Having done that, slowly mend your line and let that float drift naturally through the area where you think the fish are going to be and just keep an eye on it. It's, it's a very engaging style of fishing, but any sign of that float doing something differently, watch it the moment it starts sliding underneath. If in doubt, strike. Sometimes it's a rock, sometimes it's a fish, and very quickly you'll work out the exact depth you need to have that bait going, where your stopper should be, and where you're going to be catching fish. Watch the float, get your drift right, you'll be catching fish in no time. Finally. Oh, it's getting aerial on me. It's not a bad fish either. Change location from before because the tide is dropping and the rocks are getting a bit exposed. Cruise around the corner and the change of light gave me the option to suddenly see these big bronze flashes. Told me exactly where to fish and sometimes you don't just have to look for colour change in the water. If you've got a good set of polarised sunglasses on, you'll actually see the fish rolling and flashing because that's the way they feed. They get in around patches of vegetation sometimes and they'll either get stuff sifting past or you'll actually see them rolling on rocks and plucking away at the weed which is growing on some of the structure wherever you're fishing. So those flashes are very, very good when you're looking for Ludric. They've said, here we are, just put a float and a bit of weed in the right spot and you're away. Alright, beauties of shore based fishing. It's always an adventure trying to land fish. It's part of the fun in my books. And there you go, he's beauty. Lovely estuary Ludric. He's fallen to my trap. My little bait of cabbage floated down through that area there. I could actually see those fish flashing. That was the exciting bit about it. I was, I was actually fishing deeper on the ledge and started suddenly seeing flashes and I look closely at them and they're very bronze when they flash these guys, they give themselves away and the beauty about wearing some good, good sunglasses is that so I'll show you exactly where the fish are if not the structure aren't they lovely <laughs> that's a particularly satisfying capture because I actually spotted it, I almost cast to the fish that I wanted to catch it was flashing with about three others sitting around a rock. And I just managed to put my float above it and just drifted it down. I thought, surely I can't catch a fish that I'm actually seeing flashing. And a second later, the float drifted down. Thanks for coming. It's so satisfying that hook up when you know you've actually seen what you're after and you can catch it. And today, to help me do that, the old Alpha. Alpha brand of spotters. The nice emerald glass, which means you just get a very good depth perception and a really good range of colours no matter what the light, whether it's bright sunlight or a bit of a cloudy day like it is today. I can see a lot of stuff in the water. And that certainly helps you catch fish on days, whether you're in a boat or on the shore. Uh, Get ready for a laugh as Merv and Dipper hook up to chase a feed of snapper on Melbourne Cup Day in less than favourable sea conditions. Yep. Go on, big fella. Oh. All right. Like Melbourne Cup Day, they reckon it's the busiest day of the year. There can't be too many people at Flemington today. <laughs> They're all launching boats. <laughs> They're all launching boats. It's good to, uh, to get out early and uh, get a couple of fish for well, this afternoon's barbecue. Quarter past five. And you come down here and... It's like the MCG, isn't it? Oh, mate, it's busier than the how MCG. How did you pay to get in? How many, how many day premierships? Five. How many night premierships? Five. Five and five? Yeah. Do you reckon you've made it in life? I think so. Well, I don't reckon you've actually made it until you've got a face on lure. No way. Yeah, baby. Look at that. No way. Now that's that's Merv, not Dipper. All right. So you haven't Sorry. made it. You haven't made it until you've got your face on a lure. Well, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. Well, we'll see how this lure works. Let's go and catch a fish, eh? Yeah, let's go. Today, this 
Salz hier geschafft. Wo genau ist das? You are carrying on like a pork <laughs> chop. <laughs> You'll see. Pork chop. You'll see. What, no, what's pork chop. Once I catch you this, I'll be so stretched for the... Oh, you can stay and, and we'll do it behind you like you used to do. <laughs> he's a, he's a bit shy there, bro, isn't he? A bit shy in front of the camera. Well, I've never fished out here before. The city is to my, to my left and the mountains to my right. I've never seen so many boats out here in all in one time. Well, amazing coming out, all the lights. It's amazing, isn't it? Like a little city. You got a school of fish? That's all the pilchards you're throwing down. <laughs> dip, dip, dip. Yep, no, yep, you're right. Yep, yep. You're right. <laughs> I just got Sorry. you covered, yeah. Alaska. Don't worry, you would have caught mine. You would have pushed me off the boat and grabbed that rod, but I like it. I like your thinking. Like, hey, dipper, seriously. Ooh. Ooh. Well, hello, you got something, Merv? Yeah. Oh, hello. Uh, look at that, a little pan fry. Oh, a little pan fry, he's good. Do you know, uh, this is my first Port Phillip snapper. And have a look at him. Hold, nice hold, just hold him in the boat, because that's just going to about work off, I reckon. That, yeah, look at that, look at that little, just hanging on there, look at that. He's done well. Absolutely ripper, but that's a nice little pan size there, mate. Got the first fish in the boat. Fantastic. I know what I'll be doing this afternoon at Melbourne Cup Day. Snapper is on the barbecue. Fair thing, you've got to hand feed some people. His rod's doing a little dance. Thought it was Robert Flatley there for a while. I only go through once because the bait twists, remember? Right up. Don't go through twice, is it? So just go through once. Yeah. How many times have you both got to be told? Fair thing, I would have hated to be your coach. I'll tell you what I'll do, mate. If you want to come, if you want to come on my side of the boat, I'm happy to give you a bit of a look. I was just saying you're all short. No, no, it's all right, it's okay. Me, I'm a five-day specialist, mate. You It'll are. take a while, but I'm going for my hat trick now. <laughs> you can't call. You got to three have three fish in a row is a hat trick. No, three of the same fish in a row is a hat trick. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <laughs> you're one goal one at the moment. I am true, but you know, bad kicking. That is seven points. That's seven points. Merge, it steps up to the plate. So we've caught one on a, on a on a snatcher and we've caught one far wide. How we going, Merge in the boat yet? Not yet, mate. You must be happy catching that fish, mate. Mate, very happy after yeah. the crap you've been giving me. Oh, I, I give you the crap. Uh, uh, I, know, uh, uh, I know what fishing's all about, mate. Uh, you're right. You either got it or you haven't got it. It's nice little snapper. Engulf the pilchard. You're not playing favoritism, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, a couple of little head shakes no, and just... here he is. That one up. Yeah. Nice size, that's a nice size, yeah. Mer's got that one. Oh yeah, this place is so Oh just go easy, Dipper. Nice and easy. Light gear. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you want me to lean over? We get just him? want to make sure we get in. I don't know if I'm a good fisherman or this fish is a poor sucker who's <laughs> jumped on the line. <laughs> but uh, whatever. That's what we come to get. Yeah, you're right, mate. Yeah, that's that one I was talking about. Here, here she Let's comes. Some colour. Here he comes. Here she comes. Is that a boy or a girl? Who we'll say she comes or he comes? We don't know. Oh, that's another nice size here, Merv. All right. Let's get it in. Oh, you got two, it. Three, yeah. Beautiful fish. And that's good teamwork there, but I love the way you pulled hey, that That's a bit bigger than that, eh? Yeah. Nice size. And you've got him really good there. Like, he, he's taken both of those hooks in. A dentist. He's really... Dip the dentist. Yeah, I've, I've taken, the, well. taken the line out. There's a little... Uh, leave the hook in there. It's just something to chew on when we cook him up. Look at that. That's what we're here for, Dipper. Not here to drop him. Here to catch him. Look true. Tell us what's going on there. Oh, hello. So I reckon there'd be a lot of fish hanging around at the moment because the big merv is just giving us some more belly. Oh! I hope this cleans moustache. Oh. I can't say anymore. There's nothing worse than seeing someone seasick. I've been seasick myself. 
probably a bugbear of fishing is is a little bit of seasickness, yeah. a little bit chunky today, and yeah. I get like that. But you said there's nothing worse than being seasick. Yeah. I reckon there is. What's that? Being seasick and not catching fish. Yeah. Well, that's a lot worse. Robert Dibio Domenico just cleaned me up. I was just about to grab my no rod no. from my side of the boat and have a look what this big useless wingman's done. Just take it easy, take it easy. Well, I'm taking it easy. Mate, Relax. you don't want to pull his jawbone out. We want the whole fish. Oh, this is a nice size. Here he is. That's a nice bit of fishing too, Dipper. I like the way. I haven't seen you move yeah, like that since the 89 grand yeah. final. I had you covered, didn't I? Oh, here's another one. Mate. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab yours, Dip. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, now. this, We're this, now. this is a fish. Um, I had you covered, didn't I? I was absolutely oh, towards yeah. you. You were gone, mate. You're all over it. There we go, Dipper. Oh, no. Look at that. That is a beauty. Just, play on. Just, just keep it under your hat here. Just play keep it on. under your hat. Look at that little beauty, hey. Hey, Calvin, you haven't been on the phone, have you? Because uh, when we got here, when Merv and I got here, there was no one here. So now look at it, it's, it's like Burke Street. Hey, move on! <laughs> he's, he's probably big enough to get away with it. Well, it was Melbourne Cup Day, and we got a big barbecue to, head to attend to. So You've I'm, had enough. No, no, well, I've caught my, I've, you know, I want to catch more, but I'm not allowed to catch anymore. Oh. And we can catch them, put them back. Yeah, correct. Uh, you know, I'm... Or go back and cook them on the barbie and have a bit of a brag and see some your mates. Well, that's, well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> exactly what I'm going to do. What a morning, Merv. Uh, we started what, at 5 o'clock. Uh, had to fight the traffic to get out there. Oh. To get out there, we had to find a little spot. Our man found the spot. Right. Look, it's Melbourne Cup Day. Yes. And I can't wait because uh, I'm going to go home and uh, I'm going to fill up these fish. And we're going to have a great barbecue today. Uh, ultimately, we've only been out for, what, three and a half yeah. hours. Are we good fishing people? Or oh, they are very unlucky fish? They are very <laughs> unlucky fish. I think they are the most unluckiest fish in our Port Phillip Bay, because if you and I can get our bag load within three hours, something's going wrong. Uh, or hey? we've got a very good skipper. Hey, boys. As you go? Did you catch any? No, no. See, they don't know how to catch fish. <laughs> hey, would you like a fish? Another fish, both. Two families. Hey, two families. I don't give it a big one. No, that's all right. That's only a small yeah. one. There you go, boys. Hello, you want guys? Look at that, eh? Hey? There you go. Thanks, Bert. Cheers, boys. Good on you. Cheers, guys. Hey, kids, it's Melbourne Cup Day, so you go home and cook those up when you watch the big uh, race. Who do you bag for? Bulldogs. Hey? Okay, give us that fish back. Give us that fish back. Here's the fish back. <laughs> hey, here we are. Hey, the kangas. <laughs> Cheers, guys. See you, guys. Have a good one. Ah! Oh. <laughs> so they start to rain. The kangas. 